Janet Schertz. I'm co-founder of Willow. We're modernizing the funeral industry. Willow. What was your last night? Uh, last week, I'm like cleaning out my office on Thursday, but I'm done, done. So I'm here in the city and I can focus on our startup. We want to make gifts more impactful and meaningful. Instead of flowers and cards and casseroles, we want people to have the ability to contribute towards caskets, travel funds, and maybe catering. Things that people actually need for funerals. Even if it's a mentor, advisor, investor, whomever, get as much feedback from people as you can. Mm -hmm. Sure, but at the end of the day, you just have to trust your own instincts with some different things. Some of the angels and the VCs, they want to see that you're backed. And so that's been kind of challenging for me because I'm figuring all of this out on my own. You want someone that's just as passionate about what you're working on as you are. Yeah. I'm going to tell you about my dad. My dad was the most caring, thoughtful, wonderful man on the planet. Probably a, a lot of people would say that, but I wholeheartedly believe it and know it. And everyone that knew my dad knew that he was the best dad on the planet. When I got the phone call that my dad went into cardiac arrest. Everything was unknown for the first two days. My dad was on life support. All of that just happened in a blink of an eye. But the next piece, they pulled the tubes off of my dad and we just kind of looked at each other and said, you know, what next? I've always known that I've wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to work for myself for as long as I can remember. It's so funny because you were one of the first people that I told that we were coming up with this. It was a long time ago, huh? Mm -hmm. how, how long ago was that? Was it a year ago already? I remember one of my advisors saying, Janet, you can absolutely be an entrepreneur. You just have to have a good idea. He's always wanted to kind of run around business, but he's always wanted to like, I think everybody wants it. It's something that you're passionate about, that you wake up for. It's something that you are thinking about when you're not working, and that just kind of makes things a little bit easier for you to get up and start doing it. Stefan's been my number one cheerleader. I know it's something near and dear to Janet's heart based on her experience with her, with her dad and everything that she had to go through um, after he died. But as far as this new endeavor, I think that she's going to be great. I hope that uh, it's everything that she wants it to be. So I remember trying to juggle two jobs. You know, I had this idea and vision of Willow and what it could be and how taxing it was on my life. I had a brand new company and I also had a company that was already established that I was working for that I had to do a good job with. I had all these things pulling at me and I felt like I had to give each thing um, a little bit of my time. So that kind of meant that Willow wasn't getting the attention that it deserved for a startup company. So I am proud and happy and super scared to say that I am an entrepreneur full time. Going back to that day and how much of a fog I was in, depending on people that I didn't know and resources that weren't even there, Googling stuff about how, how you're supposed to bury a loved one. Those are all things that actually happened. My brother, sister, and I have never planned a funeral. So we had to figure out how we were gonna bury our dad, what kind of service we could give our dad with the money that we had. That's where it really hit us, that all of this stuff costs a lot of money. People are genuine whenever they wanna help you. There are people that have watched you grow up. They knew that my dad was a single father of three. They loved me, my sister, my brother. They loved my dad. They really wanted to help us, but they didn't know how. You know, we couldn't ask them for money. It's something that, you know, we were raised, you don't do. And I looked at my life and I realized that there was something huge, something huge that people actually need, that I needed. And this is where Willow comes in. The app will allow you to contribute to people's funerals, things that they actually need. So you know Janet, lost my dad, and you're like, I want to do something for her. Flowers are dumb. It's 2019. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to contribute towards a casket. So here it is. It's a fair analogy, obviously, in a much more somber situation. But like, is it somewhat analogous to like a wedding registry? Almost like a a wedding registry or like a GoFundMe, if you will. While the, the app is the end goal, 
there's something in between, I believe, that you could build with like rudimentary basic technology to prove out whether or not this works. It's a really interesting slash challenging part of this is you have to be very careful about how you're marketing to them. It's like a very sensitive kind of topic and process. And that's why I want to partner with funeral yeah. homes. So we had this idea and I had been kind of picking my brain for about a year trying to figure out how I would make this come to real life. We did a bunch of focus groups with people that we knew and people that we didn't know and we got a lot of good feedback on it. So after that we decided that all right this is a good idea. We needed to find an app developer. I reached out to Chop Dog. They got back to me pretty quickly. The founder, the owner of the company, he decided to come out and meet with me. I kind of told him my vision of everything that I wanted for Willow from start to finish. I thought that I had to have an app. I didn't even know that a prototype existed, but he suggested that. So I can go to my investors and say, hey, this is my prototype, but on the back end, this is what we're gonna do as a company. You know, having startups not easy. I've had to make a lot of sacrifices. It wasn't a super smooth transition, you know, I mean, she was pretty stressed out with her previous position and it was kind of treading water just to kind of keep this, this business running that she wasn't that connected to. And now you can definitely tell that she gets more excited about like talking about work and things like that, which is, it's, it's really nice to see. I've been pretty blessed with some great mentors that will give me raw feedback. I've you know, hired a team to do the technical stuff that we know that needs to get done for the app. Where I am today is vastly different from where I was four months ago. But there's still a piece of me that when I walk into a room, I don't necessarily feel like I belong. But I guess as I go through this journey, something that I need to realize and every other female founder out there needs to realize is that we do belong. We deserve to be in any room with investors, other entrepreneurs, CEOs. So today I work for myself. I'm super proud even though our prototype hasn't gone live and we're not at the phase where we have a working app just yet. I know that it's going to come. I have a wonderful company that is going to impact and help so many people and perhaps change our culture change it for the better.